So primary immune deficiencies, or PIDs for short, are a family of genetic disorders that predispose a patient to recurrent infections or the attack of one's own tissue by their immune system, uh, known as autoimmunity. Sometimes the, these can occur individually or in combination. What I'd like to show you today is a new PID that we've identified and termed Chapel disease for CD55 deficiency, hyperactivity of complement, angiopathic thrombosis, and protein-losing enteropathy and how we were able to identify this disease through next generation sequencing, um, verify this disease through uh, wet lab work, and then target the pathway in the patient population to create a very specific and targeted therapeutic response. Now, as you can see here, uh, we're demonstrating the main component of Chapel disease, which is the protein losing enteropathy. Now, this is loss of serum proteins through the GI tract, and you can see that uh, multiple patients have severely reduced protein content in their serum. Um, this is accompanied by severely uh, severe bloody and watery diarrhea and uh, gastrointestinal distress and pain in the patient population. Um, additionally, um, because of the protein losing enteropathy, the patients suffer from recurrent uh, bacterial infections in the lung because they're losing their protective antibodies through the GI tract. So after we were able to define the patient population, we then took their material for next generation sequencing. And what we were able to find is that every single one of these patients were homozygous for deleterious variants in a protein called CD55. And in each one of the cases, their variants resulted in a complete loss of protein expression from the surface of the patient cells. So what CD55 is best known for is a negative regulator of the complement pathway. Complement being a protective mechanism against bacterial infection. Normally, uh, complement is triggered on the surface of bacterial cells and results in the formation of uh, membrane pores that causes the direct lysis of these bacterial cells. Now, unfortunately, complement doesn't really distinguish between a bacterial cell versus a mammalian cell and complement activation and deposition is able to occur on the surface of our own cells. Now what prevents complement from reaching that terminal uh, lytic stage is a series of negative regulators of the complement pathway that are expressed both in serum and on the surface of uh, host cells. CD55 being one of those surface-bound molecules. Now in the absence of CD55, as in our patient population, you can see there's actually increased complement deposition on the surface of these cells, indicating that the protective mechanisms that prevent complement mediated damage are likely no longer there in this patient population. Now we think that this complement deposition is also meeting complement mediated damage or death of the host cells, particularly perhaps in the GI tract where the expression of CD59, another negative regulator of complement, is naturally decreased compared to other cell types. Now, why this is important is that by knowing the complement pathway is hyperactive in these patients, we might be able to target that pathway, reduce its activity, and create a personalized medication or personalized medical intervention for these patients. Thankfully, there is a negative regulator of complement already on the market for other genetic diseases that predispose to complement activation. That, that antibody is called Celeris. It binds to C5, a key component of the complement pathway, and prevents its cleavage and activation, a step that CD55 normally functions at to inhibit. So by treating our patients with Celeris, as you can see here, we were able to dramatically increase the protein content uh, in the patient serum. And this is accompanied by a cessation of the watery diarrhea, a loss of the GI pain, and a dramatic increase in patient lifestyle and, and um, health and activity. So hopefully this shows the power of next generation sequencing in the study and treatment of these primary immune deficiencies as we're able to identify the genetic lesion, the pathway affected, and then target that pathway with a molecular therapeutic that um, really represents a personalized medical approach for these patients and often can deliver better uh, patient outcomes with fewer off-target effects.